Hey, hey, party people, it's Lycona de Chichi. Welcome back to another video. And we just had our uh, letter from the producer live, uh, part 52. And rather than go through the live letter line by line and talk about all the details, I want to approach this from a different perspective. Uh, from an experience perspective, from someone who's run everything from 2.0. And hopefully it'll give you guys uh, a different kind of idea of, of how to read the patch, not necessarily how to read the patch notes, but, but how to understand what to expect is coming. And from that expectation, like prep yourself now, prep yourself and gear yourself up for uh, the expansion. So that way you can go in, have fun, uh, get all the stuff cleared, you know, enjoy the story, all that jazz. So let's get into it. Probably going to be the, one of the best things to be implemented. And the reason is, is because um, if you guys know, the DPS queues are just really long. And if you want to like run a specific dungeon or level in a specific dungeon, it, it's it's really it's really frustrating to like wait 20 minutes and then get in and then maybe the tank leaves or the healer leaves or you know or the group isn't good so the trust system i think is going to be that unsung hero it's going to be that that's that uh that one feature that's going to sneak in and it's going to surprise everybody because now all of a sudden you have you know you have your dps cues that are automatically instant um and you can go in and uh and do and uh do a dungeon you know clear it um one thing that yoshi p said was that uh, using the trust system while you do get an instant queue uh, he said that it may take you about 30 minutes to clear a dungeon where is as if if you were with a, a regular you know pug group or uh, or you know yeah, like IRL players then um, it would be much faster sort of like the the good dungeon runs we've experienced that are you know 15 15 to 20 minute runs um, even even shorter <clears throat> so you have to kind of do that balance um, and I think a lot of people will use it for this running the story uh, because all of these new dungeons will be tied to the main scenario like they have been before and what will happen is it, you'll reach a point in the main scenario quest and then from there it'll be like oh enter in this new dungeon and and progress the story and sometimes you'll pop a queue and you're like I want to know what happens with the story I want to keep going and you'll be waiting there for like 15 minutes or 20 minutes because every other DPS on the server is trying to get in that into that dungeon so I think the trust system allows you to kind of skip all that you know you throw on you know you throw on your tank your healer you know your two DPS or whichever uh, whichever class you need to make up for you go in there you run it you know, bada bing, bada boom, you're done. You know, get on out, continue the main scenario quests. Um, <clears throat> I think next up is uh, the dungeon video that we get that we saw. You're probably taking a look at uh, a lot of that stuff on screen. And uh, cool thing about that is that all the dungeons look cool. Music, music is great. Uh, I've always been a huge fan of the Final Fantasy music, and it looks like that this this patch this expansion they are delivering and uh you can't ask for anything more really uh, they're doing a good job and that's why we keep playing this game <laughs> um so there have been some new gather and crafting uh adjustments that have been made um and i'll be honest with you i'm not a crafter not a gatherer um but it looks like the ui has been updated so that way it's easier to see whether you're synthing uh, synthesizing collectibles or you're not um, and uh, I guess it shows you uh, some uh, an efficiency or a progress increase chance based on uh, your crafting statuses uh, which is neat so crafters out there I'm sure you already know the details looks like some quality of life adjustments all for the better can't go into too much detail however there is one thing that's interesting is uh is that uh for the crafters adjustments um like all of the new gear looks like it's customized per crafting job uh which they have done before in a realm reborn and i'm not quite sure about heaven's ward or uh stormblood but it looks like in shadowbringers um each each uh 
you know, crafter and each gatherer, they're going to have their own gear sets. And so you're talking about a single gear set only for one job. Are people going to have enough inventory space for all of it? You know, for for people who uh, are, you know, full time crafters, um, because one of the things that always comes up uh, or always comes in sort of uh, subsequent patches is the ability to, you know, get one gear set that spans across many crafters or many gatherers and basically just like you have one gear set that like every that everybody can you know latch on to whereas whereas the uh, screenshots that they show um each each crafter has like you know the different sets are they going to be the max sets in order to craft the max like level gear i don't know but uh, just something i was thinking about new tombstones nothing special there uh we have Gotia, which are going to be the uh, ones that you're going to grind uh, at first to get uh, to get sort of like the first uh, level gear after your uh, sort of relic gear after you finish. Because because the way it works now, and and if we know that if we are predicting that storm that Shadowbringers is going to be the same sort of uh, conditions as Stormblood, um, then we know that. Uh, once you complete your job quest, you get like eye level, you know, eye level 290 gear, and then your eye level 300 and 310 gear are going to be uh, the gear that's you you can uh, trade in with uh, tombstones of uh, Gotia. Well, in this case, it's like in Shadowbringers, it's like whatever is like the level below the Savage raid tier that's released. So your Gotia. Um, they're just like creation poetic. Uh, they're just like creation tomes right now, right? You can grind as many as you want, spend as many as you want, two thousand, you know, tome cap. Um, but it's not a weekly restriction. And then you have a uh, Phantagasmoria, which is why do they keep <laughs> why do they keep adding letters to these names, man? Um, but the uh, we'll just call them Fanta, Fanta tomes, right? Like the drink. So the Fanta tomes are going to be released during Savage. So those are the tomes that you um, that you'll grind for your uh, your weapon, which is usually 10 eye levels below the Savage weapons, um, and then later or only during the Savage fights, uh, you know, usually turns three and four of whatever the Savage fight will be. Um, those will get you your uh, your other items to upgrade the. Uh, the uh, Fanta, the Fanta Tome gear, essentially. Um, so we all know it. Two sets of Tome Stones uh, makes sense. It's it's exactly like how Final Fantasy XIV has worked before. It looks like it's working the same way now. Um, you know, totally cool. Very predictable, but um, in a way, because it's predictable, like they're able to. They're able to push out as much like content and story and development and you know and all of these like cool things for the game. So no worry about that. I think we all got it. Um, moving on. Uh, some housing updates. Uh, there's some cool housing stuff where you can actually 3D preview an item that you don't have inside your house and like you know fake place it and see how it looks. Pretty neat uh, feature for anyone who's doing uh, housing design or. Uh, you know, really likes, uh, you know, building up their house. Um, of course, there's another, you know, topic for another time, which would be, um, which would be uh, not enough housing for everybody. So what can you do? And I'm like throwing my hands up in the air. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to keep moving on. Um, <clears throat> ah, excuse me. Um, Centurio Seals, Seals, Centurio Seals. The limit has been increased from 1,000 to 4,000. Okay, great. Um, but uh, one of the things that I really found interesting was uh, the hunts in Final Fantasy. And uh, before, you never had a, a way to uh, find out where a hunt is, especially if it's a B rank, if it's your personal hunt, that you got to go around and find something. But they finally implemented something that allows you to tell you what direction your hunt is in how maybe not necessarily how close you are but like as long as you're going in that direction then you get closer and you eventually find it uh really cool quality of life thumbs up super number one a-okay perfect <laughs> um the retainer window has been updated 
I, I love this a lot. Like, I have seven retainers, and constantly I'm having to check how much gill they have on there. On there. I, I don't know. I'm kind of like a player that's like, you know, oh, I got my stash, like, on my player, and then, like, you know, my, my retainers are kind of like the bank. It's like, ah, oh, if I need to go to, you know, I go to get a withdrawal, you know, oh, I go over there and do it, whatever. And, you know, I tell my retainers, yeah, yeah, go to the gold saucer, you know, gamble a little. It's all good, you know. Bet on some chocobo races, whatevs. And, uh, you know, they really like that, so... Um, but uh, the windows change, so that way you can tell uh, how much gill each retainer has, uh, where they're selling stuff, how much inventory space is left on them, all of their names, just in one window, instead of having to click on one retainer and then, you know, talk to them, and then click on another and talk to them, and click on another and talk to them. All in one window, great, awesome, love it. Um, these, you know, they, they're really on top of uh, doing the correct quality of life uh, updates. Um, again, as well, all mounts will be flying. Pretty, pretty simple. It's just changing like three lines of code, I'm sure. Probably not three lines of code, but you know, we're gonna say it. We're gonna say it like it is. Um, <laughs> uh, looks like uh, we're gonna go with some more system updates here, and. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> and with some fancy editing, I'm back because I like, I like paused and uh, I got a knock on the door, which that really didn't happen. But you know, okay, whatever. Or I got a text on my phone. Yeah, that's what we're gonna say. And with some fancy editing, I'm back because I got like a phone call and and uh, now we're back. So, so uh, a little little bit little interesting thing is uh, achievement filters have been added. Which allow you to like, I, I feel like it allows you to uh, separate out, you know, unfinished, completed uh, item rewards, title rewards, um, whether you're, you know, tr looking for battle achievements or crafting achievements, um, you know, mob killing achievements or your tank achievements, you know, your job achievements. Uh, you can sort that out. Ah, uh, that's cool. Neat, neat stuff. Neat stuff. Um, what else do we have here? Da, da, da. Uh, looks like the mentor status. Ah, yep, that's changed. Well, technically it, it has changed and it's not changed. Like, if you're already a mentor, um, all you need to do is get to level 80 and complete the main scenario. Um, and, uh, you know, complete a dungeon at level 80. Um, same thing with the crafter. You have to, uh, you know, synthesize... Uh, collectibles gathered a certain amount and um, and reach level 80 um, and you, you should be good probably craft something at level 80 but but essentially if you're a mentor like you already know it's it's there uh, just got to get to level 80 that's what we're all going to be doing anyway so sort of like a little side note a little footnote and then we got Eden uh, the new raid which is you know everybody's everybody's favorite my favorite um, and we got like we got like a little video of this uh, of this bright white like desert looking uh, you know in the burn essentially um, and then we get a picture of um, we get a picture of the top of Eden uh, which is pretty nice so they're trying to tease it and trying to do you know all sorts of things but uh, uh, you know it, it's 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 interesting that they haven't given out a lot of information. Uh, on this this time with the raid um, they're keeping it really close to the heart they're keeping it really secret and I wonder if it's one of those things about like uh, you know teams and stuff like do I, w I wonder if it's a combination of world first groups and uh, hardcore raiders uh, giving everyone a like leg up or or letting letting them like discover um, but that's sort of like a you know, now that I think about it, it's probably not that, because it did say that Eden was going to be heavily focused, or heavily connected, that's the word, connected to the main scenario st uh, quest line, so the main scenario story. So they probably don't want to give it away because it'll be like a lot of spoilers, and so nobody likes any spoilers, so there we go. Um, next, they had uh, they had some more key characters, and they had a little biographies of each one of them. I think that was a little. I think that was neat. Um, you've probably seen them. We have some our classic characters, and then we have our uh, we have our new characters. Uh, 
And then uh, something that I really like is uh, the Heroes of the First, which is um, the uh, the the anti heroes. Oh gosh, I'm I'm having a brain fart right now. Who are they called? Um, the Warriors of Darkness. Yeah, that team. Um, when they uh, when they sort of visited us in the Stormblood main scenario, uh, probably like patch 4.5 or 4.43 or something like that. Can't quite remember, but uh. I like their storyline. Their storyline was pretty good, and uh, I'm glad to see them back. Uh, just really happy to see them back. Can't wait to, can't wait to see what what those mischievi mischievous, dark, darkened moogles are up to. <laughs> and then uh, finally, we have our upcoming schedule uh, of the release. Um, so June 28th is going to be the start of early access, and and I hear that. Uh, because I'm in LA, and so this is, I hear that it's a 2 a.m. PDT, so 5 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time is when early access will start. Uh, regular access will start uh, July 2nd. July 16th will be patch 5.01, which will begin Eden Normal. So hopefully by uh, patch 5.1, Majority of the player base will be finished with the main scenario. Uh, we'll have the two primals, maybe three, probably just two. Um, sort of like, sort of like the previous expansions, right? Because we, because in Heaven's Heaven's Ward we had Ravana and Bismarck. In Stormblood we have. Oh gosh, I can't even remember. I I just call it the Emancipation. Um, you know, it's the it's the dancing girl with the you know, with the pop the. You know, pop your viril. <laughs> I think, I, yeah, pop, it's, yeah. Um, my mind's gone right now. I'm afraid it's really late. Um, that, and we had Susano. At least I can remember Susano. Um, so I think we'll get to uh, Primals this expansion, and we've already gotten teasers of both of the both of the uh, Primals as well. We might get a third. I don't know, though. But um, but I don't know. We'll uh, we'll see. Anyway. We should be done with the primals. We should be done like gearing up with like the first set of uh, tome gear, and uh, then uh, we're all go for we'll we we'll just go for the Eden normal raid and then gear up through the normal Eden raid, and then after that uh, we all should be good with uh, patch 5.5 and then let the savage race begin, which is always a uh, which is always a fun time. Um, so uh, pretty much. Uh, that's you know that's that and uh, hopefully you guys uh, you know hopefully you guys like like the video if, if, if you like it if not well you know what to do um, and uh, you know a lot a lot of the things that um, oh and one more thing like new worlds so uh, they've had so many people uh, pre-order Shadowbringers that uh, they're gonna have to open up two new data centers um, for uh, for the game, which is pretty crazy. Uh, the Spriggan data center, which will be on the Chaos data center, and then Twintanya. Uh, worlds, I should say. New worlds. Um, Spriggan uh, on the Chaos data, data center, and Twintanya will be added to the Light data center. And, um, you know, it's interesting, because, uh, you know, I watched, I watched the live letter and uh, sort of had a chance to, you know, dive into it a little bit. Um, and there's so many, there's, there's other there's other great Final Fantasy streamers and YouTubers out there that will you know go into all the nitty little nitty greet details gritty details, all the nitty gritty details of the you know of, of everything that they said and I, I think that I think that's great and um, I kind of want to be a little bit uh, a little bit informal I should say uh, more like taking like taking the information and sort of distilling it into a, 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 a some concepts some ideas some some things to expect some uh, some uh, like to give you guys a different way of thinking about it uh, rather than just you know like oh sweet like this is you know a plus b equals c it's like uh oh, no it's more like a formula you know, it's more like a insert X here over the square root, whatever. I, you know, I was never good at math, but <laughs> the, the the thing is, like, I want to be more um, I want to be more or organic and and sort of like 
this you know give 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 you guys a, an idea of of what to expect and how to how to how to look at the information sort of you know reading between the lines so i hope you guys found that interesting um like favorite subscribe to the video because all youtubers do it i guess so might as well throw it out there and i'm gonna bring you guys some more videos so until next time i will catch you guys later